May I extend a royal greeting to you, soap fans? And let me ask, have you ever wanted to go to magical Mandora? Or wanted to follow in Karen Woolock's footsteps? Well, be careful what you wish for, because Judith Light, the actress who played Karen Woolock, got stuck in real life quicksand, and it wasn't scripted. Stay tuned, because I'm going to tell you where that was in this installment of another One Life to Live filming locations on location. Welcome to my humble home. Your Highness, Roland, this is hardly humble. Thanks for joining me again, fans of the daytime genre. In the 1980s, One Life to Live took viewers to amazing real-life locations to capture the daytime audience and set itself apart from all the other competition on daytime. It's not only because of all the amazing locations viewers got to see, but also seeing their daytime family in these settings took storylines of love, intrigue, and adventure to the next level. It was pure daytime magic. And speaking of magic, the first location is the real life locale of fictional Mandora. Well, as they say in the good old US of A, wow, <laughs> talk about a royal welcome. Salzburg, Austria was the location of Mandora. Salzburg production assistance was provided by the Austrian National Tourist Office. Mozart's Silent Night and the Sound of Music. Salzburg gives you the good life to live. The fictional country of Mandora was created by the writers in 1986. Viewers did not get to see the fabled country until 1990, four years later, when the executive producer Paul Rauch took the cast and crew on the most expensive location shoot in One Life to Live history. Set in Salzburg, Austria, the story and location shoot was written at least in part, to lure fan favorite Robin Strasser back to the role of Dorian Lord, who left the role in 1987. It didn't work, so One Life to Live cast Elaine Princey in the role of Dorian instead. Do you remember this story and did you watch? Take off with One Life to Live for the charm of Europe and the intriguing kingdom of Mandora where two brothers vie for a king's crown. He wouldn't be above using Megan to get to me and to the throne. There's danger, Megan. To you and to Sarah. Join the mystery and romance on One Life to Live. Although made up, Mendora was set on the Austrian border of Salzburg. So this was the perfect location to shoot. I cannot believe that that bus took so long to get here. Oh, thank God we made it. Yeah, look, we gotta get moving. We gotta tell everybody what is going down. Yeah, I'll get over to the American Embassy. Good idea. Now you see why we Mandorans are such a proud people. We have something to be proud of. No, you certainly do. From here, it's absolutely beautiful. This is where you'll find number one on our list, Old Town. This is a great Instagrammable spot if you're in the area. Next up, we have the famous Old Market. This is where Megan went sightseeing and shopping. It's located here. The Old Market started back in the 13th century and is only a two minute walk from Mozart's birthplace and home. This is really such a lovely town. It's like something out of a storybook. Great. Old fashioned, some would say, but with an elegance all its own. <laughs> if you're a fan of musicals, then keep your eyes open because Salzburg was also the filming location for one of the greatest musicals of all time, The Sound of Music. Speaking of The Sound of Music, like I said earlier, this was also the birthplace of Mozart. I'm sure you're wondering, but the main palace is the Schloss Kleischung. It's the main exterior shots 
for the castle in Medora, or the palace. It's now a real life casino. So if you stop by, make sure to try to get lucky. Who knows, maybe you could win the crown jewels of Medora. Or if you're really lucky, become queen for a day like Tina. That trumps all of the Disney princesses, doesn't it? This must be my scepter. Oh, Ken, isn't this the most gorgeous thing you've ever laid eyes on? What is all this? Kim, the people of Mindora want to make me queen for a day. I mean, just imagine. Tina Lord Roberts, queen. You absolutely won't want to miss this location on your trip. And who knows? Look what can happen in this casino. You could create your own kind of magic. This looks wild, everyone. I can't even believe this is Mandora today. <laughs> Looks like those trumpet players found a new job, though. Here are the directions how to get there. And I'll place the address on the screen now. Boy, if it's this beautiful in the winter, can you imagine what it's like in the spring? Sarah? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, it's lovely. So is everything else we've seen at the palace. Lovely. Cold. You're thinking of Bo, aren't you? It's just hard being without him in such a romantic place. So why don't you give him a call? I'm sure he's waiting to hear that we've arrived safely. I figured I'd wait. Before we get to the next filming location, let's take a moment and tour Mendora, or as others like to call it, Austria, through the eyes of one life to live back in 1990. When the producers took viewers on a fairy tale journey to this incredibly picturesque, intriguing fictional country of Mendora, 35 members of the New York based crew and 1,500 pounds of costumes journeyed to Salzburg, which served as Mandora for six days and nights of remote taping. Paul Rauch, the executive producer from 1984 to 1991, was quoted as saying, This was the biggest shoot to date, more extensive than anything we'd ever done. We chose Salzburg because of its layout, the old and new parts of the city, and because I wanted to take our viewers to places they might not have been to or seen on other shows. Paul Rauch was larger than life, and so was his filmmaking process, because it seemed like during his time, One Life to Live was just one movie after another. What a town, huh? What a little city. Yeah, too bad we can't see it under pleasant circumstances. Yeah, well, I don't believe this part of the Which way? If you're in Salzburg and you're a fan of puppets, then be sure to check out the Punch and Judy show at the Salzburg Marionette Theater. Looks like we lost them. Yeah, but not for long. Don't look at me. I'm fresh out of ideas. Never the, uh, fear, Cord. Here's the address to get to that theater. Oh, I don't even think I can pronounce that. Well, it's a dance company. I worked out an alternate plan through my contact at the State Department. We're going to pretend that we're a couple of American interns on loan to the Salzburg Theater Dance Works. And we're taking some sets or costumes or some damn thing to the uh, Mandoran Ballet Company. That all sounds great. Also notice in this location is the Salzburg Cathedral, and this is the address and how to get there. The next location is the Schloss Leopoldskron, forgive my pronunciation, 
This is where The Sound of Music was filmed outside in one of the rooms inside, and this is how you get there. And that castle in the sky? That's Fortress Hohen Salzburg, and you must see that. Here's the location and how to get there. This really was the perfect location for a royal wedding on location for Bo and Sarah. This is the kind of wedding that you always but dreamed of, so you. just don't you worry. Well, the time's so right, many. you say, and I do. I, uh, I, Sarah, take thee. To be my wedded husband. To be my wedded husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. To have and to hold from this day forward. For That's Bo Buchanan, and this is a Texas roundhouse. The only problem was, this wedding was not valid, because Sarah was marrying Prince Raymond, technically. Bo, isn't there another way? Honey, I always promised you an exciting honeymoon. This is it. The story's daring escape sequence, Bo, Megan, and Sarah, skiing down a mountain faced a major obstacle. An unusually warm patch of weather had left the mountain a touch bare. Rauch hired the biggest snow machine in all of Europe to supply the snow he needed to make the scene work. And don't worry about Bo and Sarah, because they ended up getting married shortly after at Land Fair. A token and pledge of our constant faith and abiding love. I take thee for my wife. <laughs> One Night to Live's flair for combining intrigue tales with picturesque international backdrops did not start in 1990, though. Four years prior to going to Salzburg, Austria, to film Mendora, in 1986, they went to Vienna, Austria, taking several members of the cast, including Vicky, Clint, Jenny, David, Cassie, and more. When the soap wrapped up its long-running espionage story featuring Jenny Rinaldi and her spy husband, David, in exciting fashion, they taped the climactic scenes in the breathtaking European city. Make sure to make your reservations at the hotel Clint and Vicky stayed at while they were in Vienna. It's still open and I found it for you. Here it is. The address is on the screen and even though it's still in operation, be sure to make a reservation. Next we follow Vicky and Clint to Belvedere Palace and Gardens. This is where Jenny was supposed to meet up with Vicky and Clint but the spies were on to her, so she had to get away before they could meet up with each other. Do you remember? You know, things land for is a palace, you ought to see this place. That's really two palaces, all built for the same prince. And you aren't hearing a word I'm saying. <laughs> Sorry, darling, I was looking for Jenny. She'll find us. Don't worry. Spotted Jenny from Landview in Austria, looking like a spy, or is she one? Espionage plan? XOXO, Gossip Girl. It's a Baroque 18th century castle. Inside houses the world's largest Gustav Klimt painting collection. You can see the most famous one, The Kiss. Do you recognize it? Make sure to take a stroll through the gardens while you're at the palace. Here's the address on the screen and the directions. Remember that statue we saw back there? Pluto and Proserpina? Yeah. He was the god of the underworld and he kidnapped the beautiful Proserpina and he made her the queen in his dark kingdom. I keep wondering if that's what's happening to you. The fountains are beautiful. 
And as Jenny looks for Vicky and Clint, you get a really good look at Belvedere Palace. A lot of the filming in Vienna took place at locations in the Stevensplatz Square. The Stevensplatz is a square at the geographical center of Vienna. It is named after its most prominent building, the Stevenstrom, Vienna's cathedral and one of the tallest churches in the world. The first location I want to show you is Aida Cafe. There's a location of 32 different chains of coffee houses, but this is the one that Clint and Vicky went to. It's in the Stevens Platz. It looks the same today as you can see on the screen, and here's how to get there. You'll see different buskers or street performers, a lot of shopping, many famous statues, and also, if you're going to do some shopping, keep an eye out because Vicky went shopping here at this linen shop. It's where she met up with Cassie. I did a little digging and I found this exact location. Don't ask me to pronounce it though. I'm not even going to try. It looks a little different today. You can see they did some remodeling. And here's how to get there. The address right here is on the screen. It's considered a very unique experience. It's a store from the 19th century where you can arrange your clothes, tea towels, sheets. It's unbelievable that this still exists and is worth a visit, not just because Vicky went here. Tell you what, uh, let's go over and look at those sheets over there. So you're looking for a bargain too? Mm -hmm. Of course. <laughs> Good. Now we take you to the historic city center of Vienna. Vienna's first district, to the Franciscan Church, also known as the Church of St. Jerome. This cathedral... What happened? Sorry, everybody. My dogs got into a little dog fight. Okay, so where was I? Right, right. Jenny. This was her secret hideout. But you know what? Besides Jenny, this building holds another secret. Behind the high altar, which takes the form of a triumphal arc, one can find and listen to the oldest organ in Vienna. Built in 1642, the organ is a technological and artistic marvel. The Franciscan Church, also known as the Church of St. Jerome, is a Roman Catholic parish church dedicated to St. Jerome and located in the historic city center. <laughs> nice try, Jenny. You fooled us once. But she's a nun. I can see that, you idiot. I mean, a real nun. Arm, Cassie did her part. The rest is up to us. Let's go. But why, why are you running? I was going to get candles for the evening mass. And since then, is this your business? Ah, honey, I'm sorry, sister. Well, Cassie helped Jenny with the old switcheroo, and Jenny finally escaped. This church is located here. Here's the map of how to get to the Franciscan Church, and as you can see, it looks the same today, even the corridor to the side. Lucky for me, One Life to Live gave me the name of a couple of the locations, like the Natural History Museum, where Vicky and Clint took a little stroll. Lectures already started, 10 to 1, Jenny won't even show. Well, she may have had trouble getting past the museum guards. And the other location I was lucky to get from One Life to Live was the place of David's piano recital, the Berg Theater. The Berg Theater, or as it's known today, the National Theater of Austria in Vienna, is the most important German language theater and one of the most important theaters in the world. Let's listen in on just a little bit of David's recital. And that is beautiful Austria, both Salzburg and Vienna. 
I really hoped you enjoyed these locations as much as I did, but sit tight because the best one is yet to come. Please take a moment to subscribe and like this video. Thank you. Clint and Vicky made one more stop in Vienna, an important one, the train station. These train stations were renovated in 2019, and although historic, they no longer look like this. But this scene is important, so let's watch. Don't worry, we won't hear a peep out of them. I'm so sorry, we had to tie them and gag them. Well, there's no time for regrets. Train's pulled in, we got a plan. Wait a minute, somebody's coming. Uh, just let me do the talking. <clears throat> Guten Tag. Ja, guten Tag. Okay. Ich weiß, äh, Sie sind der Embassy Express. Ja. Ja, es tut ja. mir leid, dass ich die Gärtkontrolle und ich muss jeden Zug anhalten. Keine Ausnahme. Aber Fräulein, nein. Nein, ich habe gesagt, es tut mir leid, aber es ist keine Ausnahme. Verstehen Sie? Ja. Ich habe jetzt die Autorität ja. und der Zug bald da, bis ich sage, er kann gehen. Ja, ja. Bitte, draußen ja. warten. Ja, ja. Dankeschön. Ja, ja. <lacht> Way to go. <lacht> Hurry up, I can't stall him forever. Now let's totally flip the cube and head to South America. Well, not really. But San Carlos, another fictional One Life to Live location, was supposed to be in South America. But this jungle was really located in Silver Springs, Florida. On One Life to Live. If we're going far away from civilization, where are we? We, my dear, are at the gateway to my paradise. Ivan, a man obsessed, and Karen, his prisoner of love. Karen, we will be in my kingdom before too long. But Jenny and Marco are close behind. Oh, please don't let it be too late. As Ivan and Karen hit deeper into the jungle, danger is everywhere. And an exotic tropical paradise awaits them. Journey to the lost city on One Life to Live. Fact. Back in 1962 to 1983, ABC TV owned a historic piece of land in Florida known as Silver Springs. So it's no surprise that in 1982, one Life to Live took Judith Light, Michael Storm, and Jack Betts to film there on location. After implanting devices in Larry and Ed Hall's brain that were going to dissolve and kill them, the maniacal Dr. Ivan Kipling convinced Karen to run off to San Carlos with him to an island that was being dubbed as the Lost City, or San Carlos. In a bizarre twist, Ivan almost married Karen, but she ran away just in time, running through the jungles alone, until Larry found her. And then they confessed their love for each other once again. San Carlos, another imaginary country that was supposed to be in South America, like I said, was actually in the jungle setting on Ross Allen Island. Ross Allen Island, known as Cypress Point Island at times, was home to the famous Ross Allen Reptile House and a popular Hollywood filming location for things such as Tarzan and Creature from the Black Lagoon. Michael Storm was initially thrilled to be playing the hero in the sort of action-adventure storyline that was becoming so popular on daytime. He was quoted as saying, I enjoyed the time we went on location to Florida, especially when Larry rescued his wife, Karen. It was the only time I saved anyone on the show. Of course, I'd save people through medical means, but I'd never been a real hero before. It felt wonderful. His thrill turned to trepidation on the first day of shooting, when the stage manager handed out flea and tick collars. At one point during the shoot, Judith Light who played Karen, wandered into a patch of quicksand. Really, real-life quicksand. Unscripted. When the crew noticed that she was sinking into the ground, they immediately pulled her out. It has a really fascinating history, and I implore you to check it out on YouTube. If you get a chance, there's some really cool videos on here. It was a popular theme park once with a river tour. In the 1930s, animals like monkeys and birds were imported, and up until 2013, you could take a riverboat tour. It is now defunct and is mostly abandoned, except for the kayak you can rent and boat along the river, if you dare.
Alligators swim there in these parts. Oh shit! No! Go away! Look how close he is to me. He came after me and tried to bite my my paddle. Board. And the wild monkeys now lay claim to the historic dock created for TV series like Sea Hunt. Theme park, yes, the monkeys are attacking! Oh my god! Run! Run behind you! Nature has reclaimed this place, but it is still wild and fun, if you dare. Not only was Sea Hunt filmed here, but so was Tarzan and Creature from the Black Lagoon. And also it was used in this One Life to Live filming location. You can still ride the historic glass bottom boats. You might get lucky and see a manatee in the clear water or one of the monkeys that remain. Here's the map, how to get to Silver Spring State Park. And below is the address. Well, that is it for my second One Life to Live filming locations on location. Please be sure to check out my other One Life to Live videos. That's good. Are we going to be together forever? Maybe we are together. <laughs> I have so many more One Life to Live, General Hospital, All My Children, Young and the Restless, you name it, for daytime. They have so many videos planned on my list, so stay tuned, subscribe, like, and please share this on all your social media sites, because I'm only on Twitter. Please follow me, and again, thanks for watching.